Alright guys, so Coromon has been out on Steam for over two weeks now with the Nintendo Switch and mobile pending, and I've honestly been having a ton of fun making guides, breakdowns, discussion videos, let's plays, and more, and it's clear by your feedback that you guys are loving it too. That said, in today's video, I want to shed some light on some other monster taming games that are either out or up and coming that I believe fans of Coromon should definitely check out. Some of these games play very similarly, some of these games just feature amazing pixel art like Coromon, and others are just really good and I'd recommend to any Coromon fan. I really want to use the recent growth on my channel and success of Coromon to give even more developers within the genre a platform and hopefully we'll be able to show them even more success as well. All of the games mentioned will have their social media platforms linked below. If you see something you like, please follow them, share their work, and definitely get hyped. Anyways, with all that said, make sure to sit back, relax, and let's dive right in. Okay, if you somehow ended up on my video not knowing what Coromon is, it's essentially a Pokemon-like RPG with some really clean gameplay, pixel art, and monster design. Basically one of the best indie Pokemon-esque games in my opinion, especially if you're into the single player and shiny hunting aspects. PvP is still in its early stages, but so far so good. Check out this review for a full breakdown of the game, should you be so inclined. And with that, let's dive into number one. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a no-brainer. Nexamon and Coromon are two games that in my opinion both captured the good of what makes Pokemon great and pushed away some of the bad. Neither game is perfect of course and I've made critiques towards both, but all in all they're both fantastic games. The Nexamon franchise, so both Nexamon and Nexamon 2, excel in the story department especially the second one being Extinction. Nexamon Extinction specifically features a semi-open world and after the free DLC that's in the works, we'll have over 400 Nexamon to catch and train, still high 300s before the DLC. The game also much like Coromon features custom playthrough options, side quests, boss battles, and more. I will say that the battle system is less complex than Coromon, so some mons do feel a little sameish, or others feel straight up objectively better than others. But all in all, if someone told me they wanted a Coromon-esque experience, the next mon franchise would be the first thing I told them to check out. Now, by the way, this is not a list in order from best to worst or vice versa, or based on what's the most similar or anything like that. The order is pretty much irrelevant here, but in this next slot, we do have a monster taming title in the form of Cassette Beast coming that I'm personally really excited for. This is a very different game mechanically, but by the looks of it, still features a similar charm and amazing pixel art style. The game features double battles, which I know a lot of people really wanted in Coromon. I personally like singles better, but I'm still open to doubles. It also has fusions that allows for over 10,000 unique combinations, a special type matchup system that allows for various buffs, debuffs, and even type transmutation to occur, an open world, some 2.5D platforming elements, and a heck of a lot more. I've made a few videos on the game at this point, and it doesn't have a release date yet, but I will leave my playlist link below. Definitely check it out. It's one of my most anticipated upcoming monster taming games, period. Okay, so Coromon features both Pokemon-like and even some Zelda-like features. An upcoming game that fully dives into both of these aspects is Accenture's, a Game Boy Color-styled monster taming hybrid game allowing for both real-time top-down weapon-based combat and turn-based monster battling. Basically, your monsters can transform into weapons for you to utilize in combat. We still don't have a whole lot of information about the game, but from what I've seen, it's definitely looking to be quite the unique experience and deserves a lot more attention in my opinion. Definitely check out their social media, I think it's really cool. A title that surely needs no introduction to this channel is Monster Sanctuary, a 2D Metroidvania RPG hybrid, again with some of the cleanest pixel art in the genre. Monster Sanctuary does not play like Coromon in the slightest, other than the fact that they're both monster battling RPGs with worlds to explore. So why is it on this list, you might ask? Well, because it's an awesome indie pixel art monster taming experience that I think you'll end up liking if you're a fan of Coromon, or any monster taming game to be honest. The gameplay doesn't fully overlap, but it does feature exploration, dungeon puzzles, turn-based combat, which in this case is much more complex, difficulty options, and even has a free DLC in the work that'll bring forth customization settings, new monsters, and a new area to explore. An earlier development title that does currently have a Steam demo is Anode Heart, a monster taming RPG where you play as a robot whom has lost their memory. This title includes a semi-open world to explore, fast-paced combat, 120 tameable creatures, overworld encounters, and even a card mini game within the game. This is definitely one of the games on my list of demos to stream or create an individual video for, so definitely let me know which you'd like to see better. If you have played it, let me know what your thoughts are. My recommendation here is based on the really nice overworld pixel art, the focus on exploration, and the interesting premise. 
Temtem is a pretty well-known monster taming game at this point, and much like Coromon features Pokemon-like combat, but its twist is that it does not feature any RNG as far as battling is concerned. All battles are balanced specifically for the competitive scene, and all of them take place in doubles format. They also have an ELO system, which is definitely good if you're trying to get into the competitive scene. While I'm not a big fan of the whole IV and EV system, which Temtem does have a variance, even more convoluted than Pokemon in my opinion, getting into competitive isn't that bad because all you have to do is train the TVs or EV equivalents from Pokemon as ranked matches are scaled. Other than that, the game features a pretty lengthy campaign reminiscent of what you'd expect from a Pokemon game, and honestly really nice monster models and animations specifically regarding the attack VFX. Okay, so Trails of Sunder is a very early development title that we don't know a whole lot about, but can I just say, the pixel art for these monsters are on point in this game, and that alone leads me to believe that the game is going to be pretty hype. That said, there is more hype to be had as the game is supposed to take elements from both the Elder Scrolls franchise and the Pokemon franchise in order to make something truly unique. Battles seem to have their own unique twist, and presumably the game will be either semi or fully open world. Again, not a huge amount of info, but I'm looking forward to watching this thing develop, and you should too. A game being published by the same studio as Coromon is Monster Tribe, and much like other games on this list, the combat and premise are different, but the game has a chief focus on exploration, turn-based combat, and pixel art. In this game, you fight in grid-style battles, each side having six different squares and different types of attacks that will affect the grid differently in terms of which squares it can influence and stuff like that. This title is semi-open world with a new demo having just launched recently that, much like Anode Heart, I have on my list to check out. Once this video goes live, we might have already already done so. If that's the case, it will be linked below. We played the old demo a while back with Reese, aka the developer, so if you want to check that out and get an idea of what the game is about, definitely feel free to do so, but do note, changes have been made since. So yeah, if you like exploring an open environment, crafting, and resource management, this game might be for you. A pretty noteworthy Pokemon-esque experience you can find on mobile is Evo Creo, a turn-based monster taming RPG much like others in today's list. In this game, you can explore the world of Zenith, battling your monsters, and the normal stuff you do in most monster taming games. This game sort of seen as a classic modern monster taming game, if that makes any sense. Being around during the time of the Micromon days when there weren't a lot of other monster taming RPGs. There's a sequel in the works and I'd love to play the first one in anticipation for that on stream with you guys, or at least in a Let's Play format. So I, I want to install Bluestack or something because I think I'd have a much easier time playing it on PC since it is unfortunately mobile only. Not a whole lot of information regarding the sequel is out. There's supposed to be a beta test this spring, so we'll see how that goes. Monster Crown is another pixel art RPG inspired by the Game Boy Color era of Pokemon. This, however, is far from Monster Crown's only caveat. It's actually a very deep game mechanic-wise. So yes, you have your world to explore and monsters to tame, then subsequently utilize in turn-based combat, but you also have crossbreeding, allowing for truly customizable monsters. You have a built-in synergy system for battles, allowing for mid-battle transformations, not too dissimilar from Mega Evolution. You have additional items, allowing for even more unique transformations that can be permanently changed even, and then crossbred to get even more forms and a dark and sinister world to boot. The game's definitely got a lot going on and can really get complex, but from a single-player perspective, you don't really have to dive into the deepest of systems to enjoy the game, but they are at your disposal should you choose to. So yeah, those were 10 monster taming games that I think fans of Coromon should definitely check out. Like I said before, not all of these are exactly like Coromon. Each and every monster taming game has its own unique aspects and caveats, which is a sentiment to the creativity present within the genre. I really hope that after people have had their fun with Coromon and start to look towards future Coromon titles, they can enjoy other monster taming games in the meantime and support their favorite developers. Now, with all that said, if you did enjoy the video, definitely like and subscribe to the channel. I put out new videos every single day. You can also check me out on Twitter, Discord, Patreon, all links below. Special thanks to my patrons, especially Steel Case, Jim Hamilton, Dark Persona, and Dro Ghost, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.